When you get out of your own way and you stop overthinking everything, trading just becomes so easy. What's going on, everyone? So in today's video, I'm going to go over the SPY, the QQQ, the IWM, Bitcoin, the broad markets, and then all of the freaking 5 million different stocks that you guys wanted me to cover for technical analysis today. So let's get right into it. All right, guys, let's get right into it. All right. So this morning, I said that the SPY needed to hold 4.1420 and 4.1370. All right, so right here, 4.14.20, we uh, clearly were not able to hold, and we ended up falling, okay? So I said, you know, if you didn't get a chance to short here, um, you could end up shorting it as it broke here. If you didn't want to short there, now would be a very good time. You could have shorted as we fell below 4.14.20. But again, I was like, look, you know, like maybe if you don't want to add shorts, it makes sense. Then we ended up touching exactly on 413.70. And you can see that we were trading at this level for, you know, at least an hour. And we had multiple touches the day before around this level. Okay, so 413.70 came and a huge flush down occurred. So what I said was going to happen if we fell at this level was we were going to end up filling this gap to... 411.50 and that is exactly what ended up happening we ended up falling much further than that but then we found support at that gap and then we um continued on a little higher but literally guys trading is just so simple if you get out of your own way if you stop if you if you leave your emotions out of it if you stop thinking that you know the markets make no sense what's happening why is it moving up so fast blah blah you have to understand that robots without any minds are trading these levels perfectly. And what they're doing is it's exactly that. They're trading the levels. They don't care about how people feel. They don't care about, you know, oh, you know, um, we've been so they just trade the levels blindly. That's literally all you need to do. If you trade the levels blindly, if you went short as we fell um, for 1370, you would have made a sh crap ton of money today. And then I told you, you know, there would be a target at 411.50. That entire move happened within an hour. Okay? Like, this, it's very, very simple. Okay? So, that was the SPY. All right? Um, there was a huge move downward on the SPY. Congratulations if you made it. Um, I didn't have a chance to alert it on Twitter. I was very, very busy with lots of different stuff. So, I posted this on the video this morning um so i hope you guys saw the levels that i posted um by the way i got a new mic so uh yeah i hope you guys uh enjoy my crispy voice <laughs> i have to play around with the settings so um yeah we'll see how i sound after this anyway yeah so this is the spy i mean we got a huge downward move already um now it's just a matter of seeing where we can fall and what we can do next okay all right, so now the next key level of support on the SPY is going to be this level right here, which will coincide with 408.80 on the SPY. So tomorrow, 408.80 needs to hold on the SPY. This level was a level from October um, 2019, okay? So I'm going to show you guys that right now. All right, so as you can see, this trend line right here is that level of support that I was talking about, okay? So it ranges back all the way from October 19, uh, 2019. Uh, the break of this level began the bear market of uh, March 2020. We can see that we had a touch here in September. We had multiple touches here in February. And once we crossed over this level, that's when the melt up began on the SPY. Okay. So, like I've always been saying, right, on the shorter time frames, what I have been saying is that um, when on the shorter time frames we make a break out of a specific key resistance level, right, um, or a key you know support level, what tends to happen is there needs to be a retest of that level before we continue going in that direction. Okay, so you see that you know once we break a certain level, there's a retest and then it falls down even lower. Uh, I showed you guys that in yesterday's video. Um, we broke down below this level, there was a retest, and then we broke down even lower. So what, on the larger time frame, okay, 
a few days ago, we finally crossed above this level here. Okay? We have made a huge run up. And now what needs to happen is on the daily time frame, on the larger term, we need to retest the level that we broke out of. Okay? That would give people an opportunity to add to more calls, to buy more stocks for a potential move higher. Okay? So that's what I think um, can potentially happen. But if we begin to fall down lower from that level, 408.80, that is going to look very, very bad for the SPY. Okay? Um, because if we end up breaking that, then there's multiple gaps to the downside. Lots of lots of gaps. You could just put the SPY on a 15-minute chart and you'll see, um, the, just, just look at, there's multiple gaps on the way to the downside. But again, you know, this is just a very clear way of trading. Looking at things from a um, outside view, this level needs to hold. All right, so that's the level that we're going to be looking at for tomorrow. The Nasdaq, the QQQ. We've been calling the levels perfectly since the top here. I told you guys exactly the levels that were needed to hold. All of them broke. Uh, this March 2020 uptrend line right here, it broke. <laughs> and then the March 1999 level began uh, to act as support. And then today in the morning, I said that 337.10 needed to hold. And if we look at where 337.10 is, uh, it's this uh, March 1999 level. Okay, that level didn't hold and clearly you ended up falling even lower. Okay, uh, as we can see, the spy also, you know, it um, filled that gap. The QQQ also filled the gap, but the NASDAQ has even more gaps to the downside. So if the spy begins to fall, if the NASDAQ cannot reclaim this March 1999 level, then it will continue falling down lower and it will fill these gaps to the downside. Um, at 331.85, that will end up um, being filled. I mean, that that's pretty scary because it can get really, really disgusting and uh, very, very bearish very quickly as um, we start falling and if these resistances can't break. <clears throat> okay, so the level that needs to break for tomorrow for the NASDAQ to become and uh, remain bearish, uh, bullish is going to be 337.20. Okay, so if 337.20 cannot break, then it can look very very bad but um what might end up happening is we will end up retesting around this area somewhere close um it will give another great opportunity to add to shorts as you know i've been calling out every single morning over the past few days now um if you didn't get a chance to short this you could have had a chance to short this every single day i was just honestly i was just calling out these levels um, and it's not a swing trading market. It's a day trading market. So scalping these levels is, you know, it's, you have to scalp them. It's really tough to swing trade because say, for example, um, you know, you, yeah, yeah, honestly, just, it's tough for me to explain right now, but because the movement in the stocks are so sporadic and random day to day, um, just trading the levels blindly intraday right now, because there's no clear cut um direction of the market every day like once we go up you know we end up going down and then we go up again and then we end up going down and then oh look we rebound nope we broke support so <laughs> so if you're you know it's much easier to just trade the levels intraday um and uh yeah just adhere to the levels this march 1999 level is literally going to be the support 337.20 needs to break if 337.20 doesn't break then we will continue to the downside the first level of support is going to be this wick down here at 332.94. If 332.94 does not hold on the queues, then we will fill this gap up. Um, we will fill this gap down to 331.85, which is the high of this candle. Okay. Uh, just as I've said, you know, we were going to fill this wick if we continued and um, the spy ended up filling that wick. So yeah, that's, that's what's currently going on with the queues. And um, I mean, it's normal because the Q look, look at what's happened in the past. <laughs> look at what's happened in the past few weeks. We've skyrocketed. What, what were we at 307? We ended up touching past 340 in less than a month. OK, so obviously, you know, a, a reversal is healthy at this point. People need to take profits. We need to retest levels of support. 
give people you know opportunities to get into uh, long positions because up here it made no sense again like i was saying this in a few videos uh earlier i was saying if you were a fund and you had millions of dollars at your disposal why would you use those millions of dollars to buy and long stock at these levels here when you can be patient wait for the market to fall down lower and buy the buy, buy everything at a cheaper price at a more safe position you have to put yourself in the position of like these funds that have hundreds of millions and billions of dollars you have to control you have to you, you basically have to um really really protect your money okay you wouldn't put all of your eggs in one basket and think that the market is going to continue going on higher at the all-time highs okay especially when we made such a dramatic move to the upside all right if we made such a dramatic move to the upside and we're at highs you have to not think that we're going to continue you have to start becoming wary and uh you have to start you know um protecting your capital and uh that's what i've been saying every day i was just calling out the levels that needed to hold if they didn't hold you buy short you go short against those levels. If they do hold, you got you buy calls against those levels. But you know, since we've been going short, I kept on. I only stressed the support levels. That's it. If we broke those supports, you could have literally went short against those levels. You would have been making bank this entire time. Okay. So I'm going to update that again tomorrow morning. I'm going to start posting um, these levels specifically with the charts on Twitter every morning because I've only been posting them on uh, Instagram and TikTok. So I'm going to be posting these specific levels on uh, Twitter as well, okay? Look, like I said this morning, the IWM 220.87 needed to hold. Look, if look, you could have went short the you could have went short the IWM against 220.87 and you would have made money like it went all the way down to 215. Okay? Like you, these levels are there for a reason. Funds and institutions are looking at these levels for a reason. Okay? They Look, man, it's it's really, really simple. Trading is honestly, like, once you get out of your own way and you stop overthinking things, it's very simple. Um, right now, it's a day trader's market. It's not a swing trader's market. We saw that the IWM held... Um, no, sorry. IWM broke uh, 218 and 217.50, and I was trading below that. Um, I drew out this bear flag, and I said that, you know, if we broke these levels of support... And we continued on downward. We could see potentially 198. And, you know, that's uh, that's currently what's going on right now. We broke a bear flag to the downside. Clean. And that is very, very bearish. We can see that the IWM was the biggest loser today. Um, because the tech sector was the sector that was basically holding everything up. Um, the next level that really needs to hold on the IWM is going to be 313. Uh, 213. And if 213 doesn't hold, then, um, yeah, things can get very, very uh, bad. But one good thing is that the IWM is starting to become um, oversold on the MACD. And let me go over the MACDs on everything else as well. We can see that the SPY's MACD is becoming oversold as well. And hopefully, you know, if we can buy at this level of support and have a stop loss a bit lower that can potentially give more room to the upside the qqq we're starting to become uh oversold and we're starting to get to support as well so um yeah like uh, th these are these are important levels and it's good because if we were oversold sorry if we were overbought at support that would be very very bearish but the fact that we are oversold and we're nearing support that means that there is potential room to the upside okay so all three major indices are beginning to become extremely oversold and they're starting to near support. Okay, so that is a bullish sign in the, um, you know, in the coming weeks. But again, I mean, it doesn't mean anything. If these levels break, we just have to trade the levels blindly. We cannot fall in love with a position. We can't fall in love with a bias. As soon as you fall in love with the bias, you're going to lose all of your money. And that's not what we're trying to do here. The dollar, we can see that it fell, and um, it fell even lower today. Um, but we found support, and now it looks like we're going to start retesting this uh, level of resistance that broke uh, at ninety-one point thirty-seven. And um, 
yeah, so let's see if the dollar can rebound. <clears throat> if the dollar can rebound and find a support above these levels, then it can start going on higher, and that would be very, very bearish for the indices, and the indices would end up falling even lower, in my opinion. So let's see if that happens. <clears throat> but, you know, I'm not entirely sure um, if the dollar, if, if that will happen with the dollar. But we have to just trade the levels blindly. We're not sure. Um, the U.S. 10-year yield had a red day as well today. It fell 3%. And um, we can see... Now, the, another thing, honestly, on Bitcoin. Bitcoin, I said that Bitcoin was going to try to fill this wick. Okay? I, I said that in the past, whenever Bitcoin has huge wicks to the downside or to the upside, those wicks tend to get filled eventually. Okay? So anytime you see um, a huge wick... On the bottom of a candle they eventually get filled or mostly filled okay so because of that reason yesterday when bitcoin was trading at fifty six thousand, uh, yesterday two days ago the entire time basically when bitcoin is trading at fifty six thousand, i said look we have a wick all the way down to 51.5 i said that i think that bitcoin is going to touch at least to 53.5 and what ended up happening, we ended up touching 53,400, okay? And from there, we ended up finding support. So that means that many people were looking at 53,500 as a potential support. They ended up bringing it down $100 lower to try to liquidate everyone's stop losses. <laughs> and then they ended up bringing it higher. So now we can see potentially Bitcoin climbing on higher. Uh, the levels that need to hold, uh, the levels that need to break on Bitcoin is going to be 57,100. Uh, um, and if we can, if, no, sorry, 57,600. And if that can break, then we can, you know, if that can break and we find support, then that will be very, very bullish for Bitcoin. And that would be amazing for all of Mara, Riot, um, Ethereum, all of the various different, um, altcoins as well okay so it's a very good sign that bitcoin is making a huge move up above yesterday's uh open um it's completely engulfed this candle which is very good and now we're approaching um this level of resistance another thing to take into account on bitcoin is we are extremely oversold on the magd which is very very good okay and that will potentially give us room to the upside on bitcoin so yeah we just have to keep that in mind crude oil it actually had a uh red day today obviously because the rest of the market and the tech sector and um everything else you know obviously had a red day but what is really really beautiful is that we are sitting liter oops we're sitting literally at the 50 simple moving average and the 10 simple moving average they're literally sitting on top of each other so those levels held as beautiful support and um, yeah, man, you need to have these. You need to have these things on your charts. You need to be looking at these levels. Like, if you're not looking at these things, then you're hindering yourself. Why would you? Uh, what's the point? Like, it's like riding a bike with one leg. Why would you ride a bike with one leg when you have another leg? Okay, you you have to use all of the tools at your disposal. And um, funds, institutions, algorithms, they look at these different, um, you know, technical indicators and simple moving averages and. All of these things. So you should be as well. Okay. All in all, the SPY, the QQQ, everyone, everything is approaching the support from where we broke out of. Okay. So my, my, um, my thought is we're going to retest this level of support. We might end up breaking just a bit lower to get everyone out of their um, stop losses. And then we will continue on higher. And if that doesn't happen, we're not going to, you know, fall in love with the fact that I think we're going to remain bullish. We're going to buy the crap out of puts all the way down and we're going to make a lot of money. OK, so, yeah, you just have to trade the levels blindly. That is my 20 man analysis on the spy, the QQQ, all of these other things. And now I'm going to go over the 7000 stocks that you guys wanted me to go over for technical analysis. So first on the list is Ethereum. Ethereum looks absolutely beautiful. It is leading uh, Bitcoin. Um, altcoins in general looks to be uh, leading Bitcoin currently. And uh, if Ethereum can cross above 23,043, 
that is going to be amazing for Bitcoin. And um, if we can break this, find support and continue on higher, Bitcoin is going to definitely break this level of resistance and continue on higher as well. Okay, so let's see if Ethereum can break that 50, uh, 2350 level. Um, it looks really, really strong. It looks beautiful. It's oversold on the MACD at resistance. So it means that there is a lot of potential room to the upside. And if we can break this level, then we can potentially break new all time highs on Ethereum. Um, yeah, that's this is a very, very strong move. So, yeah, keep in mind and uh, keep Ethereum on your watch list. All right, GameStop. So GameStop is trading above the 61.8% Fibonacci level at 156.92. Okay, so we closed above that level. We can see that that level has acted as resistance and support um, all throughout here. And we currently closed above it. All right, so now what GameStop really needs to do is as long as it's holding above 156.92, it needs to it needs to reclaim this um uptrend that we have over here that we created from february um uh 2021 okay so we created this uptrend and we saw that it acted as support multiple times but now it's currently acting as resistance okay so the level that needs to break on gamestop for tomorrow for it to continue up to the upside is going to be approximately 178.90 so 178.90 needs to break um, on GameStop for it to continue upward. And if we can break with strength, the Bollinger Bands are starting to tighten up. Um, that is, uh, it looks pretty, pretty, pretty good for a potential squeeze to the upside. And um, yeah, hopefully we can find support above this level and continue on higher. All right. So GameStop above 178.80 is going to be very important. Tesla. Tesla, really beautiful as well. It's actually sitting on top of the 10 simple moving average. And we can also see that it didn't even bother retesting the 50 simple moving average. Tesla, Tesla was very, very bullish today. And um, one other interesting thing is, you know, if we created an uptrend from March 30th, multiple touches, and today, um, we're literally, it, it acted as resistance. All right, so what was support before is now acting as resistance and uh, we can see that tesla could not reclaim this level so essentially tesla needs to break tomorrow tesla would need to break um over 751 uh, approximately 751 all right so if tesla can break above 751 the next level that would need to break on tesla is going to be this <clears throat> this uh support level which was the uh uptrend Again, similar to GameStop, we had multiple touches, and what was support before is now acting as resistance. All right, we, it was clear resistance all throughout here. All right, so once we break above 751, hopefully that's what happens. Uh, the next target would be this trend line up here. All right, so if you look at Tesla, uh, the MACD on Tesla, right, you can see that it isn't as oversold, but we're oversold at resistance. Whereas Ethereum and Bitcoin, they were extremely oversold and they looked much stronger. So it looks like Ethereum and Bitcoin have way more room to the upside than Tesla. Okay, so that's that's just some things that you should um, take into consideration when you're looking at the MACD indicator, as well as where we're sitting at um, on the price action. So VMC, um, this... You know, it looks very, very terrible, honestly, because we're curling up on the MACD. We can see that the MACD is moving up, but the price is moving down. OK, so that is very, 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 very bearish. Um, what needs to hold now is uh, 660, 661. If 661 doesn't hold on this stock, then, you know, it can go down much, much lower uh, to these support levels down here at 550. And um, you, you can see the signs already that the MACD is curling up. Usually when this happens, the price should be curling up as well. But it's reversing, which is very, very bearish. All right. So I would be very careful about VMC. <clears throat> Riot. So Riot is, you know, it's trading in between these two levels of support. 
and it's basically waiting to see what bitcoin is going to do but the fact that ethereum is you know leading the charge and it looks like it's breaking resistance points um it looks like it, it's already up 8.4 percent for the day um it looks um like riot can potentially start following bitcoin as well so the levels that need to hold on riot are 3428 and if that level does not hold i mean uh yeah so 3428 needs to hold but the level above that needs to break is 3917 so we close below 3917 but you can see that in the post market um we're starting to trade around that level so keep an eye on 3917 and if that for some reason doesn't break above um then this level but hopefully you know we find support here and then we retest this trend line up here and um once that happens if we can retest this downtrend here that is going to be a very very explosive move but you know it really all predicates on how the overall markets are doing also because if the overall markets are puking then you know it depends if bitcoin's correlation is going to uh persist with the overall market or if the correlation is going to break so yeah that's that's just something that we need to take into account ccl it's literally it was one of my favorite stocks um <clears throat> made a lot of money on ccl man it would yeah so basically <laughs> ccl uh support level that needs to hold on ccl is 25 28 um we can see that the 50 simple moving average acted as resistance we couldn't cross above it and that is very very bearish um which is also very bearish for the iwm i mean and also it's because the iwm fell so heavily all of these other stocks in the iwm you know they also fell so again we are oversold nearing resistance so that's going to be what's really going on on most of the stocks currently we're oversold and we're nearing resist or nearing support so let's see if uh ccl can hold 25 30 and um yeah if not then it can retest this lower trend line here and um yeah but the odds of that happening would potentially be very low if the overall market begins to turn back up gtt look man that is it's such a garbage stock it's been trading so terribly um look it, it worked out of it was extremely oversold okay after a huge downward move extremely oversold right here and what ended up happening is look we we only went what we went up 50 cents when in actuality when something is this oversold it should shoot up to the past resistance levels but the fact that that didn't happen is extremely extremely bearish so now the level that needs to hold on gtt is going to be this support level at 150. if 150 doesn't hold then you know you can see that it acted as support for multiple times in the past <clears throat> if that doesn't hold man i i wouldn't even be looking at this stock anymore it's garbage but um yeah so there's gtt qlgn also just absolutely absolutely garbage um the level that needs to hold is 171 you could you could buy into it now have a tight stop a bit below uh 171 and um you could be aiming for you know 230 maybe we can potentially fill this gap but again it all depends on how long you want to hold on to the stock um but again you know when a stock is beaten down like this so much uh the fact that we haven't had a bounce is a uh, very it's alarming because um we can see that the macd is beginning to become uh it's beginning to curl up again you know so again like the other stock that i showed when something is curling up but the price isn't responding to this momentum upward it's very very bad so 171 needs to hold all right gnpx look it's oversold nearing uh support um if this support level doesn't hold <clears throat> then we can continue on much lower it fell outside of the lower level of the uh b band which is one standard deviation away from the midpoint and um look if 322 doesn't hold on gnpx 
we can fall much, much lower. We can see that it crossed below the 200 simple moving average as well, which is extremely bearish. Um, then, you know, we would be targeting these levels of support down here. And there's multiple layers down there, but we had a huge red day. And uh, it doesn't look good for GNPX. VISL. VISL, again, you know, this is, this is the, a reoccurring theme. VISL, it didn't break above its 200 simple moving average. It's curling up on the MACD, but the price is not responding properly to the uh, move upward. And um, the support that needs to hold on VISL is 211. If 211 doesn't hold, it can be very, very bearish because we're already moving upward on the MACD, but the price is not responding properly. So usually, again, when the MACD is curling upward, the price should be nearing multiple levels of resistance to the upside. But the fact that that didn't happen, again, very, very bearish. So I would be um, very careful with BISL to the long side, and um, I wouldn't fall in love with this. SKLZ, it looks very, very bearish. It broke yesterday's support, and um, you know we drew this out, and it broke down yesterday below 1350. And you can see that it flushed down below 1350. It touched all the way down to 1245. And the MACD is now just crossing down below. So when the MACD crosses down below this yellow line, that means that there is still lots of room to the downside. So that is very, very bearish. Um, yeah, you know, you could buy puts against this level and have a stop loss a bit higher for a potential move to the downside on SKLZ. But, you know, um, it doesn't look very bullish if that's what um, you wanted me to look at. You can see that the, the 10 simple moving average crossed down below the 200 simple moving average. The 20 EMA crossed down below the 200 simple moving average. The 50 simple moving average is cro like it, it. You can see it pointing downward. That's these are all very bearish signs. APXT. You can see that you know there was multiple levels of support over the past few weeks at this level here at um, 1050. Okay. Yesterday we touched that level as well at 1050, but then today we flushed down below it. But then what's interesting on um apxt is that the macd is now very oversold okay and it's still a good thing that there are multiple layers of support um below here and if you know essentially today's lows can hold the macd can start to curl up and potentially we can find support we can find you know a, a bottom above this level at 1050 and then move back up higher so you know if you were to buy into apxt I would have a very tight stop loss below today's lows. All right. And um, yeah, I would have a tight stop loss somewhere below, you know, $10. You would be risking essentially 50, 60 cents really for a move up here. But again, you know, it all depends on your risk tolerance and how long you're willing to hold and, you know, how much you think that the stock, how much you believe in the stock. But currently, we broke a level of. Uh, support so until this level of support reclaims itself me personally i wouldn't buy into the stock <clears throat> it needs to trade above 1050 again for me to buy into it so neo it had a very bullish move but as you can see the 10 simple moving average and the 20 exponential moving average uh were acting as clear resistance for today okay but what is interesting though is that the bollinger bands are getting extremely tight and usually when that happens um a very strong move follows so right here when the bollinger bands were tight right here we shot to the upside right here when the bollinger bands were tight we shot to the downside okay so that um means that you know we can potentially see a very very strong move what is very nice though is that we crossed above this downtrend uh, uh trend line we opened above it but because the overall market was so bearish, we could not close and have a very strong day. So NEO for tomorrow, the support level that needs to hold essentially is $36. If $36 doesn't hold, then we will fall down below this trend line and things can get much, much worse. But um, 
I don't really see how that happens because if that happens, then it can fall down even lower. And that would be very, very bearish. Okay. We can see EDU had an amazing, amazing day today. Um, the level of support that needs to hold on EDU is 1599. We can see also that the 200 simple moving average, um, we closed essentially right at it. The 200 um, is at 1617. We closed at 1616. And then to the upside, the 50 simple moving average acted as resistance. So really 1599 needs to hold as support. One thing to take note of is that the MACD is extremely overbought and we are very far away from the MACD line. So that is something to take into account and uh, to be wary of. If we can remain above $16, find support here, give time for the MACD to cool off a bit, then we can see a huge move upward in EDU. Um, but yeah, at this point, I would just be careful and just it needs to hold above $16. So DraftKings has multiple levels of support to the downside. We can see that there's support at 53.76 to the downside, which is today's low, as well as um, 52.67. Okay, so both of these levels have acted as clear support and resistance in the past. And um, that's currently where we're at on DraftKings. We can see that it's extremely tight on the MACD. The MACD just crossed above the MACD line, but DraftKings is falling down below. So that is, you know, it's it's not like where um, we crossed above it with strength. It still means that DraftKings can potentially stay above these levels of support, but overall it looks, you know, bearish, but it needs to hold above 53.76 and 52.67. If these levels can hold, then, you know, we can potentially see another strong move to the upside but you know um it all really also depends on the overall market and the major indices as well all right eat eat um we're sitting at what well, we bounced off of uh support today which was today's lows we can see that it was in an uh uptrend here uh, we bounced off the support so now today the level that needs to hold is going to be um 66.40 if 6640 doesn't hold on eat that means that we are we've broken the uptrend and you can draw this yourself as well from january 27th uh you connect these lines here and if we're trading below that trend line then it will be very bearish on eat but that level needs to hold and then the upward resistance which is also confluent with the 50 simple moving average is going to be this level right here at 7049 so that level uh, is resistance to the upside. We have the downside support. We have our levels defined. But one caveat is that we are extremely overbought on the MACD in a uh, bearish scenario. If we were extremely oversold, like here, at support, that would be a very bullish scenario because that would mean that there's a lot more room for the MACD to go up and that would potentially give room for eat to also go up but the fact that that's reversed is bearish so these levels need to hold at 6640 on eat so on numi all right numi uh we can see that it has support today at 78 cents okay which also coincides with the 200 simple moving average at 79 cents all right so that level really needs to hold we can see that it you know multiple touches in the back um, that level needs to hold. Um, you can go long against this level and have a tight stop a bit below it. Um, we can see that it is oversold on the MACD at support, which is very, very good. Okay, so let's see if these levels of support can hold on Numi. Roblox. So two days ago, you know, we broke an uptrend channel, and that would have been an amazing short opportunity as we fell below this trend line here okay but now what's happening is we are extremely oversold at support on roblox and the support is going to be at 6730 6730 needs to hold on roblox and the resistance to the upside is 7183 okay so those are your levels you can choose to buy or you can choose to wait um for it to get closer here or you can you know you can choose to buy 
as it crosses above 7183 and um hopefully it finds somewhat of a support if you buy as it crosses you have to have a stop loss a bit below and um yeah that would be the best case scenario for roblox all right c-o-u-r uh, of course era i mean like there's not much to work with here <laughs> um like it hasn't been trading long enough this is the macd <laughs> um but yeah i mean the level that needs to hold on coursera is 4018 all right i mean aside from that if 4018 doesn't hold then i guess we fall lower um it doesn't even have enough information for any moving averages um but yeah you can buy here have a tight stop loss below a bit hopefully for a move to the upside on coursera all right ocg all right, it's also at a. It also looks very, very similar to XL, which I shared uh, the other day. But um, XL had a way, way worse uh, move to the downside. So OCG, we can see that it's in a descending, tr um, descending wedge, a falling wedge, and we're at a major level of support as well, which is at 477. So 477 needs to hold on OCG. We can potentially see a strong move to the upside but the caveat is that the 10 simple moving average is crossing down below the 50 which is bearish um but what's interesting is that the macd is still below the macd line so that means that we can cross back above it um and it's nice because we're at support we're still a bit oversold on the macd and um things can uh look good to the upside here if uh 477 holds if 477 doesn't hold, then yeah, I mean you could have a stop loss around 450 potentially. Um, but yeah, if if that breaks, then you you go short or you just sell your position. You can't fall in love with it. PayPal, it's extremely oversold. Um, it, you can see that it broke through a level of support here at 266.30, which is the 23.6% Fib level. The next levels of resistance on PayPal are going to be the 50 simple moving average at 259.82, as well as the 38.2% Fibonacci level at 258.89. So what could happen is we can continue falling down a bit lower, find support around this area. You could buy as we find, uh, as we find support here, have a stop loss a bit lower. By then, the MACD is also going to be extremely oversold. And then, you know, we can potentially have another move to the upside. Oh, oops. And also, um, it would give more time for a potential bear flag formation to be created. And uh, we would have a move to the upside on PayPal. But yeah, keep your eyes on PayPal. Chewy. Oof. Um, yeah, so today, you know, it broke the uptrend level and um had a huge down day so it broke also another level of support at 77.22 and um now the level that needs to hold on chewy is going to be this level here at 75.16 which also coincides with the 200 simple moving average which is this purple line so you know one thing that's interesting though again is that we are extremely oversold and we're nearing support so that's the good thing um the 200 simple moving average coincides with a past support level so there's good confluence there and usually when there is good confluence it's a very good sign stpk we're also very oversold and we are at at support okay so very oversold we're at support the levels of support that I need to hold on stpk are 2164 and then this level right here at 2022 okay so if these levels break then stbk looks very very bearish but we are again we're oversold nearing support so hopefully we can consolidate a bit here um find support and continue on higher and then the next level of resistance would obviously be this uptrend here and uh yeah we'll we'll get to that when we do sos it had a very very bullish move today um it needed to hold above so yesterday uh it broke down the uh, levels of support today it broke even further down but then it rebounded very very nicely 
So it needs to trade above 421. And it also needs to trade above 405. So as long as those two levels hold and we find a good support around here, it can continue on higher. Um, what's also a very bullish sign on SOS is that the MACD line is oversold here. So the MACD line is oversold. That means that there is potential room to the upside on SOS, which is very bullish for SOS. Rocket. We're also sitting at multiple levels of support here for Rocket. Um, we're oversold on the MACD, which is a good thing. Um, and as we can see, the prior level of support is going to be where the ledge is for this gap. So that level is going to be at 2158. So if 2158 doesn't hold on Rocket, then we could potentially fill this gap here all the way up to 2098. And um, yeah, we just have to trade the levels blindly. We have to see if these levels hold. But it's a good thing we're at support. The MACD is oversold. And um, yeah, let's just let's just see what Rocket does. Rocket is a very fast mover. And if we can find a good, decent level of support here, um, this can move very, very quickly. And you can make a lot of money. Look, man, Peloton looks, uh, Peloton looks pretty good as well. I mean, it's very, very oversold at support now. Um, it needs to hold above this low at 104. It needs to hold above $104. If it can't hold above 104, then, you know, we can continue on even further down because also the 200 simple moving average acted as clear resistance for the past two days. But the one good thing is that we are very, very, very oversold now. So what needs to happen now is Peloton needs to work off of this oversold, start going higher, and the MACD needs to start curling up. Yeah, the MACD needs to start curling up. And if we can see the MACD start curling up, but Peloton fails to really make a substantial move to the upside to any key resistance levels, then that would be very, very bearish on Peloton. What we want to see is the MACD curling up and Peloton moving up very strongly. That would be a very bullish sign for Peloton. Air Canada looks very, very bad. I mean, honestly, because all of the, you know, Canada is basically shut down. So all of the airline stocks on Canada are getting uh, beaten. So the level that needs to hold on AC is going to be 2247. If 2247 doesn't hold, then that would be very, very, very bearish because we are extremely oversold on the MACD. So we're oversold, nearing support, which is good for AC. So let's see if these levels can hold. Tillery, the level that needs to hold on Tillery is going to be this low at 1560. And we can see that it also touched this level pretty cleanly as well today at 1563. So 1560 needs to hold on Tillery. If it doesn't hold, you need to take your losses and you need to move on and reconsider buying in above as we cross it. So if it crosses below 1560, I would have a tight stop a bit lower around maybe 1530, potentially 1525, depending on your risk tolerance. And then I would just sell it. But instead of you know trying to catch a falling knife, I would wait for it to trade above 1560 again for me to buy in. So if it falls, you could buy short. Don't get me wrong. You could go short against this level at 1560 as well and have a tight stop above and um, just follow it to the downside because, you know, it looks pretty bearish because, you know, the MACD was extremely oversold here and we didn't even get a chance to curl up properly alongside the MACD and uh, the MACD crossed above but Tillery had a very bearish move to the downside today which is very very bad so um yeah these levels need to hold at 1560 uh yeah that's that's basically it for Tillery PLTR 2106 needs to hold on PLTR if that level doesn't hold the lower level that needs to hold is going to be um right here at 2020 all right so again pltr a lot of these other stocks were oversold on the macd nearing support which is good 
So again, we need to see how we respond around these levels here. If we can consolidate, find a support level, and then go up higher. CRBP, 163 needs to hold on CRBP. Um, it looks pretty interesting because, uh, you know, we're pretty, you know, we got beaten down. But the MACD doesn't look great. But CRBP made a bit of a reversal today. So it doesn't look terrible. Um, this level needs to hold here at 163. If we can hold above it, uh, the next level of resistance would be the 10 simple moving average, which is also confluent with uh, these levels of resistance here around 178. But, you know, there's a lot of levels of resistance here to the upside. And um, it's not as clean of a trade. So I'd be very careful because a lot of people are also looking at this and um, it, they know that it's not that clean of a trade. So this level really needs to hold at 163. NAC looks garbage. It needs to hold above 52 cents. If it doesn't hold above 52 cents, we can see that the 10 simple moving average acted as clear resistance all throughout this period here. Um, it needs to hold above 52 cents. If it can consolidate, hold above 52 cents. We see that the MACD is also a bit oversold now we can see a potential move to the upside on knack hive um this is also a blockchain play so it heavily correlates to uh bitcoin and all of the other cryptocurrencies i'm assuming so uh but this is a uh canadian stock so i'm not entirely sure all i know for now is that we are trading above this uptrend level and we are extremely oversold so it looks very very similar to bitcoin and ethereum what i was showing before so if these levels can hold here if we can remain above this trend line you can connect it from january uh, 27th and you can connect this trend line here so if these levels hold if today's low holds at 381 and then uh, yesterday's low holds at 363 that is very bullish because we're extremely oversold at support and every single time we've touched this level it's skyrocketed so let's see if that happens again today or you know in the next few days but zom had a very very bearish day it crossed down below um it's 78.6 percent fibonacci level at you know 8180 <clears throat> and um we're trading down below it so the next level of resistance would honestly be the ledge for this um gap here that we have and the ledge is going to be at 6319 all right so 6319 kind of correlates and there's confluence with it with the 200 simple moving average at 65 cents okay so that's my analysis for zom it needs to hold 65 and 63 cents i would wait for it to cross above um 8180 and um yeah, I would wait for it to cross above that and then buy back into it. But yeah, all in all, there's my analysis. I went over all of the stocks that you guys wanted me to. I went over the um, the main indices. I hope you guys liked it. Drop a like, drop a comment. Um, you know, I hope you guys enjoyed and you're learning from what I'm doing here. And uh, yeah, have an amazing day.